Hello everybody, Oridon here, and I'm giving you a quick guide to the Black Forge, which is a new subzone out of the Wolf of slash 1.1 patch. And if you didn't know, this is the entrance point to the Black Forge, it's in the red zone, and it is now a requirement to unlock Heiner, so I might need to update my character unlocking video. And uh, before we go on, I want to bring up these couple of spells here with my head blocking one of them, or cards. So if you're going into the Black Forge, you might want to consider a repair armor, a couple of crafts of those, shake it off for your tank, and then if you're playing a bard, or if you want to bring extra counters to what the zone is going to do for you with a scout, I think Tune Up and uh, Sweet Melody slash Healing Serenades are great because you're going to be wanting to dispel a lot of fire. Like, I wouldn't craft the scout cards because your scout's probably going to be your DPS in this area, so that's only in case of, hey, I want to heal friends through this or uh, get some friends through this without them uh, compromising on their stuff. So down here in the mages, I have a uh, rain, cold sap, prismatic field, and the rain is there just to put wet on your hope already, which cancels out all fire stacks, which is really, really nice. Cold Sap's there to uh, pull rain from the discard if you happen to uh, get it on a turn you don't need it, or you need to bring it out of the discard. And then Prismatic Field is amazing, especially when most of the enemies are going to be doing fire damage, because all heroes are going to be getting that 30% fire resistance. Really, really underrated to put Insulate on your heroes, so definitely do that when going in here, especially for the final boss, which I'll get into why later. And then Healing Rain, definitely craft those when you can and then expected prophecy to either draw out your healing reins or put them back on top of the deck for when you actually need them uh, on a different turn then you can also go with dispel magic and mass dispel as well but those are good in almost any zone so getting into the black forge when you go to the gates you have this event here and Heiner's the only one that can guarantee that you open it without any negative effect if you want to open it Every time you'll want to do the enter, open the gates at any cost to endure the heat. Anybody that fails that roll by getting a zero cost card is going to take an injury of a severe burn. And then only open the gates if no one is hurt for a group full of fire fire higher means that you're only going to get in just like the hatch in the zone one if you roll at five or higher. All right, this is what the zone looks like. And I believe right here I'm going to fill that in with a... Uh, little bit of a map. I'm going to put a link to the map in the description below if you want to look at it later, but here's what I've discovered out in the zone. I'm going to skip the two combat nodes and just go talking to the uh, top left book node right here. That is just a story node, which is going to be future DLC. Just like the Wolf Wars had a little diary node, this is going to be probably the diary node for this area when uh, they decided to add it in, or if they decided to add it in at all, with how the Wolf Warriors went. But these four characters, you can they just have a little character event. They don't get any reward for it. They just get a little bit of lore. So if you wanted to bring some characters in, get more lore about the world, this is the node you go to, and any one of those four characters has it. It'll say, like, there's five hidden options, but I think one of the hidden options is just enter the room, but it's not programmed in yet, so that's going to be there. On the top node with the anvils is going to be four crafting items where you can either craft the Osmian boots, obsidian staff, obsi two obsidian rings, I should have mentioned that, and the anvil. And then if you choose not to craft anything at that node, you can just get the obsidian ingots, which is used to unlock Orby or craft something in Act 4. So now Orby as a pet unlock no longer needs the random event to spawn there. And then another thing to note on the random rolls is if you critically succeed any roll by getting a roll greater than three on it on what you need like if you need to roll greater than five and you roll an eight you're gonna get the corrupted version of that item so if you roll on a less than six and you roll a three you're going to get a two corrupted obsidian rings for that and then going to the node right below that is a place where you find the large emerald it'll give you the option between leave Go in a little bit, go in medium amount, and go in far. The farther you go down in the, the event is the more chance you have to get yourself burned because it plays a four-card Monty where it mixes up the cards and you pick one. 
And unless you're good at that game, you're going to have a bad chance of getting a bigger reward of golden shards the farther you down. Because it's one good card versus two good cards versus three good cards the farther you go up. But you don't get the large emerald if you choose not to play, so it always it's almost always worth it to play the uh, go in a little bit and get the three out of four good chance cards. And this green node at the bottom right is a fishing node. Rookly, if you bring him here, he has an event where he gets a free fishing rod, and that fishing rod gives you a, every two turns, a fish that gives you fury, which is really good. And if you come in here with anybody equipped with a fishing rod or corrupted rod, you'll get a burnt carp. But if you bring in the steel rod, he will give you a lava blob. This unfortunately does not lock the, unlock the lava pet in the shop, but it is a card that does lava splash on all enemies, which is insanely good. So definitely consider it if you see this node up. Oh, you're not going to be able to tell if the node's up, but consider bringing a steel rod in, into the zone. And there is a guaranteed way to get the steel rod. If you go to the blue zone first, there is a interaction with one of the rat merchants, where if you give him cheese, which you buy from the... Traveling vendor at the start of the game to get a guaranteed steel rod, you can guarantee yourself a lava blob. So I'll be uh, pointing that out probably when I do the uh, black sewers, or not the black sewers, but the frozen sewers subzone. And the next note up here in the middle before the final boss is Thules having an event to open a box. And then uh, there's also a roll to open the box, I think, as well. And then Heiner also gets a little event here where you can learn a an improved lasers ability. And this mysterious key is for the One Piece quest, or the Straw Hat slash One Piece quest, and going across the bridges in Act 4. So if you want to get the key, hit this node, and you're going to have to do a fight against two steamrollers and two boiler golems, unless you have Thules who will disarm the trap for you and not spawn the two golems, or the two little boiler guys. I think Heiner's thing also doesn't spawn the boiler guys, but I'm not sure. I should have uh, double checked that. And then there's uh, three characters that have events with the final boss. I think I have that here on uh, this page here. I should have swapped those two pages, but I will. So your choices to you enter the combat with the final boss is going to be just attack it directly. It doesn't get as much block as it would if you tried to rest. When you rest, it puts a 125 block on all parts and 325 on the boss. And if you critically hit the rest, which is rolling a 1 or lower between all four characters, you recover 100% of your HP and the monster does not get it, or the boss does not get any block on any parts. Or I think the boss still gets like a 60 to 180 block. And then uh, if you critically fail this, you don't heal at all, you get minus 6 HP and you get the severe burn injury. And the monster still gets all the block, so careful when you're rolling with uh, decks with big cards. When you bring in Cornelius, he'll put two Insulate on all heroes when you start the combat. When you bring in Wilbur, he'll put two Wet Stacks on all heroes. And since you are also taking extreme heat from this area, I think I should have mentioned that earlier, but any fight combat in the area, you're going to start out with four burn on everybody. So what this Wet Stacks does is cancel out four burn and also put two wet on everybody so they get two less burn when they uh, start the go or when they start getting burn stacks. And then uh, what the beep, beep danger does is puts 12 more block on all heroes and minus 40 block on DT 800 from when you do it uh, attack with normally. And then let's talk about DT 800. This is, uh, I think, minus 1 or minus 2. And this is the Act 1, Act, or not Act 1, but Act 2 if you go to the red zone first, his abilities. Pretty simple boss. The first part I have there with two cards. He only plays one card per turn. The second part, which is a face, plays two cards per turn. The third part plays two cards per turn. And the fourth will uh, play one card per turn. And alternating between those two cards, I believe, or it might play tactical nuke, two missile barrages, and then another tactical nuke. And if you take out the uh, middle part, the main DT-800 part, that one uh, will end the fight up. But I usually find it easiest to take out the back part and then work on the front and then go from there because the back part has a tactical nuke which is pretty deadly as well as the missile barrage they also have a lot of mighty gate so consider bringing a purge if you can get it because purging that mighty gate is 
pretty dang handy for actually being able to do damage. Is that really how much might get to get on minus one? I'll have to double check that because that is a lot and it might need to be changed. But yeah, this first part will first part will alternate between melting flame and scorching flame, where you lose a lot of your block and apply vulnerable to all the heroes. That's why repair armor is so good. Another reason why repair armor is really good is because of the uh, crosshairs ability and set target ability that the face does, which will uh, put mark on one hero and taunt them, and also put mark on all the heroes. So getting that mark off is really good. But it's not that much of a dangerous boss if you are able to dispel the fire. Because that's its primary way of dealing damage and insulate also helps a lot in getting the damage you take from this. And another thing the main head does the first turn is play the reactive laser. The first turn which gives uh, the middle part an enchantment where every time you hit it or hit its block it will reactively laser you and cast door fortress and then the, after that it'll do set target door fortress and Crosshair Door Fortress, either uh, combination of those two. And the main one will do a combination of Burning Core, Volatile Core, and then it'll alternate between a Reactive Laser and then one of the Burning Core and Volatile Cores for the rest of its turn. It'll only Reactive Laser every other turn, otherwise it's just going to do two of the uh, Burning Core and Volatile Core abilities. And that's the highlight on the boss. I hope it helps. I hope you guys defeat it, do well, and that's my little quick guide to the uh, new red zone. All right, uh, let me get myself back up there to wave y'all goodbye and have a wonderful evening, day, night, whatever. Remember to brush your teeth, take care of yourselves, and keep being awesome. Love y'all.